G'day Internet, welcome back to another video and something a little bit different. Now, as a retro vintage computer game console person, this stuff, uh, I have a reasonable collection of CRT monitors and stuff like that. Um, and the simple fact is this is, look, I've got flat panels that can take all kinds of inputs and all the rest of it, but there is something about a period correct CRT that kind of just works for me. It's not just about the functionality of the computer, it's about the aesthetic of the whole thing. The other reason, I guess, is that as much as there are video standards out there, let's be honest, during the late 70s and early 80s, these standards were shall we say, more of a guide than anything else to some manufacturers. Uh, and I've generally found that CRTs are a bit more forgiving when it comes to computers that may not be outputting on a rock solid standard. And as much as I have upgraded uh, numerous computers and consoles over the years to RF or S-Video or RGB or whatever, uh, I've still got a few that I honestly just prefer to leave as RF. Now, a lot of the flat screens that uh, I've got uh, do have tuners in them, but they're digital tuners. And I've found in the past that they really struggle to lock on to the signal uh, of vintage equipment. Um, either the auto-tune will just blast straight past it and not even detect it, or you spend ages just trying to fine tune with the remote control, which just, it just never really works. While an old school analog tuner uh, in a TV such as this one, from my experience at least, tends to do a better job. So I've always tried to keep at least one old portable television like this one around. Unfortunately, uh, my previous one, which is an old Sanyo, which I'm not sure if you've actually seen on the channel. Uh, if I have, um, I'll put it kind of up here somewhere. But it died about oh, probably nearly a year ago now. Uh, and I've been on the hunt for a replacement. Uh, and I was out uh, at the local vintage shop out at Fishwick. G'day, guys. Um, and they had this sitting behind the counter, didn't really know what to do with, and kind of went here have this. And so we have a Toshiba television to look at today. It is a, actually, what is it? It is a 141E3A. And when I Googled that model number, it came up with nothing. I think I found like one ad and that was about it. Um, so it should be kind of interesting. In this video, there's only a few things I really want to take care of. Uh, we'll start by taking a look around the television to see what it has and what it doesn't have. Uh, it clearly needs a very thorough cleanup. Um, and uh, as part of that, I will pull the back off just to make sure that there's nothing scary going on. Uh, and then we'll give it a test. So let's get into it. So it's a fairly simple unit, uh, very kind of circa uh, 1980s. Uh, we've got uh, vertical size, color, contrast, uh, and brightness dials along the bottom, uh, a single speaker, uh, volume control slider, power button, uh, and our channel select buttons up the top. Uh, something called automatic voltage regulation, which I'm not sure what that is. Um, maybe it auto senses between like 110 and 240 volt, don't know. Uh, it's black stripe electronic tuning. Behind the little door, we have our tuning controls, uh, our eight channels. Uh, the little blue bit at the top is labeled one, two, and U, uh, which I'm guessing is uh, VHF, uh, low, high, and UHF. Uh, and then our actual tuning controls. Um, I'm not sure what uh, that switch does yet, nor that little thing. But this little knobby bit here, which comes off, seems to uh, lock into that switch. So I'll have to suss that out. Sides of the machine have pretty much nothing going on. Uh, and around the back, we have our uh, hardwired uh, 
power cable. Um, the wiring to the rabbit ears on the top uh, and our antenna input, uh, which should come out. Come on. There we go. This television was obviously once serviced by Anden Electronics. Uh, and yes, that is a local Canberra phone number. Uh, and as you can see, it is a Toshiba Color TV model number 141E3A. Warning, dangerous voltage inside, etc., etc. Made in Japan. And that's pretty much your lot. Uh, so next job is to give this thing a scrub because as you can see, yeah, it's quite dusty. Oh, and on top we have a little handwritten sticker. Now these kind of stickers I actually try to keep, but this one's really trashed. But you can see it had capital, uh, which is what uh, Channel 10 here used to be called, ABC Prime, which is our Channel 7, Win, which is our Channel 9, uh, and SBS. Now, to start cleaning this thing, I'm gonna do something that I tend to do, uh, and that's what I call a dry clean. Uh, primarily because in my experience, as soon as I hit this thing with spray and wipe, all this dust is essentially gonna turn to, well, mud. Uh, so I tend, this is just a cheap painter's brush. Uh, I tend to go over the whole thing with a brush to essentially get the big chunks off. And I just find that it then makes uh, the wet cleaning with spray and wipe and all the rest of it uh, a little quicker and easier. Now it's time for the old Windex and paper towel. Uh, with this, this is just my own personal experience, um, I either tend to spray the Windex directly onto the paper towel, especially if I'm trying to get into little nooks and crannies, um, or if it's a big surface, I tend to stand back from it and kind of mist the whole thing. And I tend to find that, because you don't want to like get right in there with the Windex, because otherwise you end up with this stuff where you don't want it inside. Uh, and I tend to find that that helps kind of get it onto enough of the Windex onto the surface uh, without kind of causing any damage. The back of this actually has quite the textured surface. The front, this whole bit here, uh, is smooth plastic. This, this is all a rough surface, so that's gonna make it a little trickier to clean. And obviously an old toothbrush is good for vents. Actually on this rough surface, this toothbrush is doing a really good job of getting into the texture and then coming back through with the paper towel, basically just to sop it up. Mmm, it's like changing color before my eyes. Now my intention isn't to do like a full restoration on this thing, but there are a few bumps and scrapes I'd like to get rid of, uh, and a magic eraser will do the job nicely for that. And I find teaming it up with some Windex works wonders. All right, now that it actually looks a little bit more presentable and I don't feel completely gross touching it, time to whip the back off and see what's going on inside. All right, crappy old towel and on its face. Other way around. And instantly noticing all the bits I missed. Okay, I think this is gonna be the old case of remove screws until item falls apart. Now there's a screw where this goes in and a screw near the antenna adapter. Sometimes I find on these they do need to be uh, taken out, sometimes they don't. So I'm gonna go with don't and see how I go. It's a do. Okay. Uh, what am I stuck on? Uh, 
okay. The cable that goes to the tuner. Yeah, it's quite dusty inside. So internally, it's obviously dusty, but I've certainly seen worse. Uh, if you saw my Vectrex video, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, this, I think, is just gonna be a job for the air compressor. So we must take a quick look at what's going on inside. Uh, we've got focus and screen on the flyback, uh, vertical height, sub brightness. Uh, there's a few others back here. Uh, horizontal hold. Um, what else have we got? Uh, there's some potentiometers there, I'm not sure. Uh, AFC balance, ACG, no idea. Um, I'm not sure what those ones are. Uh, and that seems to be about it in regards to adjustability. Uh, and then you, you have your uh, RGB drive uh, on the neck board. I've got to admit, given that channel eight had eight slash AV uh, on the button at the front, I kind of hoped I might find a sneaky like composite in on the board somewhere, but unfortunately no. Now, it would seem logical to test this thing with uh, the back cover off in case I need to adjust anything, but what am I gonna actually test it with? Hmm. Ooh, I know. How about that Atari VCS Vader that I got uh, with the 7800 a couple of months ago? Haven't really touched this since then, so seems like a good opportunity. Okay, step one. Well, it's making staticky sounds. We have, well, white noise. Um, well, the chances anything's already tuned in. That one went white. Ooh, it's obviously picking up something. Could be this cartridge. Well, we've got something, it's just not very well tuned in. Give me, I don't know, half an hour to try and fine tune this thing, I guess. Here's a problem. I don't have the tool for this. Huh. What can I do? Oh, that's the tool. Sweet. I wonder if this is actually the vertical hold. Well, okay. Whoop. Yes. That's better. It was the uh, vertical size. Here's a question. This is obviously labeled vertical size, but I've got vertical height at the back. Why would you have, anyway. It's not bad for an old Atari. That's like legitimately not bad for, you know, this is an old Atari. which never had the greatest picture in the world to begin with. But, I'm not really complaining. Oh, where am I? Come on, where's, just get that last little. Maybe I should try something with, I don't know, like a better picture than an old Atari 2600. How about a bit of Mario Brothers? Now, the NES doesn't have the greatest RF signal in the world, it's better than the Atari, but I gotta be honest with something, probably the best machine I've had for RF signal was my TI-994A, and sadly I actually had to sell it a little while ago uh, to free up some funds for other projects. But this, well, that wasn't a good start, but um, yeah, the I don't know what is, how it's coming out on camera, but um, this is actually uh, looking pretty good. Um, and it's doing the job quite nicely. 
And look, I know RF is still pretty crap, but you know, that's what these consoles and stuff were designed around originally. I mean, okay, so this actually has composite out as well, but yeah. All in all, I'm actually pretty happy with the way this has uh, turned out. Come on, make it. Good, thank you. Well, with that's all sorted, actually, hang on a minute. Right, now, with this all sorted, uh, I'll button the old girl back up uh, and we can finish up. And there we go, it's all kind of buttoned up and happy. Now look, I realise this is probably not the most exciting video in the world. At the end of the day, I gave it a clean and a test, but it's something I really wanted to do. And it's, the simple fact is, is that little televisions like this, I mean, when I was a kid, it was like a little 13 inch, I don't know, like Rank Arena or something like that, that I had my master system plugged into. This is actually what we had as kids. It was usually a hand-me-down, second-hand, small colour television with whatever console we got given uh, that Christmas or birthday or whatever in our bedroom. If you were lucky to have your own television, that is. Uh, I know I had a lot of friends who had to, like, you know, fight over the television uh, come, you know, usually about six o'clock in the evening, which was when the news kind of came on here. Uh, but... Yeah, this just is complete and utter nostalgia for me because this is this is what we had. And I absolutely love that I've got this little television back up and running and I've got my Nintendo plugged into it and this this is just it. This is what we had, this is what I had, and I love it. And I hope you did too. Uh, and if you do like the video, uh, click like, subscribe, all the usual youtube -y stuff. As always, a massive shout out to my Patreons who are scrolling up the screen as I speak, uh, because without them, this channel probably wouldn't exist. Uh, and if you'd like to help support the channel, there is a link in the description. But until then, I'll see you in the next one.